All right, today I want to talk about the methylation panel. This is probably my favorite test, my absolute favorite test. I totally geek out on this every time I see this, which sadly is not as often as I would like because I don't run it all the time. So if you're thinking of running a methylation panel, I'd say back the boat up. It's not the first step. We first want to go online, get an ancestry test, just the basic one, uh, the cheapest option that they've got. You don't need to do the membership, anything like that. You really just want your raw data. You want to put it in some readers. I've got a whole um, instruction on how to do that and how to analyze your genetics in the back of my book, Heal Yourself. And we want to do that first. And we want to get an organic acid test and we want to get a full blood panel because those three labs together create our foundation and tell us which of these genes are really active. And 95% of the time, that's all you need. And based on those tests and those protocols, you will get the right support on board and you're going to start to feel better as you move through the Heal Yourself program and do your Dutch and do gut work. I don't run this often with my clients. There is one reason I do run it is if I run those genetics and blood work and I see a CBS mutation and I see that that is active, likely active, so homocysteine is below six that's indicating that CBS is active, I will then run a methylation panel to check because sometimes homocysteine can go below six and it is not a CBS issue. This lab will tell us if the CBS is active. And does that sound like gibberish? Probably yes, unless you've done a lot of research into this or you've read my book and um, you've been looking into these genes. But I wanted to have this video here for people who are like me and love geeking out on these labs. So uh, CBS definitely, when I see any mutation, one or two plus really low below six homocysteine, this test is going to be run. The other reason I run this test is after, if I've put the foundation on board, so I've done genetics, oats and blood work, and I've got this foundation protocol on board, and then we go and we do the Dutch test and I retest your blood work and your homocysteine is still high. Why is the the support that we're putting on board. Why is that not working? I will run this test and I will check. But the majority of time we put the support on board from those three foundation labs. And there is absolutely no reason to run this lab because people start to feel better. Their numbers start to improve and we move to gut work. That is the goal. We want to rebuild and repair the body before we go to gut work. Um, but some people do need this lab. It is a really cool lab. So I wanted to do a video on it. So the first page is the genes that they're testing. Now, I don't order this on this lab because I get the ancestry, which has way, 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 way more genes than this. And I want all of those genes that I talk about in my book. And then even more than that, because I do have a whole advanced genetic session that I do um, do with my clients and teach in the academy. Uh, but we definitely want at least those labs that are in my book. So uh, this methylation status ratio is something that Genova is experimenting with right now. Uh, it doesn't really correlate to symptoms yet. Um, and it's really not anything that I'm concerned about. So uh, what I want to actually look at are the numbers here. But just looking at the numbers isn't going to tell us as much as scrolling all the way down to this beautiful diagram of the methylation cycle. So here at the top of the top circle is the methyl. Can I, I need to make this smaller. How is, where's is my small button? I really love when this program moves all of its buttons around and I can't figure out, actually I can do a shift and should be able to do that. No, apparently when zoom is on, I lose my control functions. Okay. Oh no, maybe it's this one. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, so I just wanted to make this a little bit smaller so that you can see that methylation is up here and transsulfuration is down there. And there's that beautiful CBS enzyme that I was talking about. So this is how your body adds a methyl group to things to detoxify it. So it's one of the seven phases of phase two detoxification. Check out my detoxification video to get like a whole in-depth explanation about the the three phases of detox. And then in my book, there's a huge, huge chapter on these detoxification pathways. If you really wanna geek out with me and really understand what's going on. All right, so when we're looking at how this pathway moves, homocysteine is this key marker that we're testing on blood work. If it is below six, it is indicating that the CBS is active. 
And when we run this lab, we can see, and then I'll tell you why in a second. When it is a, between six and 7.2, it is optimal. That is where we would like it. Anywhere above six to 7.2, so anything above 7.2, you know, eight, nine, 10, I've seen homocysteine in the 40s, which is, you know, scary, very scary. Uh, if that is happening, you need to get your detox pathways repaired ASAP. Um, so homocysteine needs to be recycled back into methionine. And how it does that is through the gene that everybody's probably heard about is MTHFR. Um, and then the lesser known genes, MTR and MTRR, which are acting on B12. This is acting, this, this has to do with folate. So it needs to be recycled back. If homocysteine is high, there is an issue with one of these enzymes or there is an issue with BHMT. That's where we're gonna look at and see on this pathway. And we can actually see it here. Um, if you know this, if choline, if you don't have enough choline going into here, then it's going to not uh, have this enzyme working the way it should. If you have a mutation on BHMT, you need more choline support. If you have an MTHFR C677T mutation, you're going to need some methylfolate support to get this moving. We actually can bypass this step here by giving methylfolate. Now, methylfolate is not for everybody because we have to look at other mutations like COMT. I am COMT++ on multiple genes. And if you give me some methylfolate, I'm going to become manic, which is not a happy place to be. Well, actually it does feel really good, but then it's not sustainable and you crash and it's not a good place. Uh, because then it leads to the other side of manic, which is depression uh, with the, the whole bipolar issue, right? So we can't just throw in something based on one mutation or one gene. We need to look at the whole picture. So um, we, if, if there is an MTHFR mutation, we're going to need to get in some folate support, but sometimes we need to be very strategic about it. Sometimes we need to change the form. If we have the MTR mutation or the MTRR mutation, then we are going to have a need for methyl B12. Again, some people aren't going to be able to tolerate those methyl donors. And we're going to need to do that strategically with other forms or microdosing of the methyl donors. So um, we can see here that this person does have low methionine, their homocysteine is good. So there is a issue with one of these mutations that is not coming back up, right? <clears throat> now, methylation actually happens at SAMe. Now, that doesn't mean you want to just go taking a bunch of SAMe because you could have a bottleneck here at SAH and that might not be converting to homocysteine. So it's why this test is really awesome because it's giving us this beautiful picture, but we have to look at everything downstream. So we can't just be like, oh, methionine is low. I'm going to jack that up, especially if we have an active CBS mutation, which this person doesn't. We can, we can see that clearly. So when CBS is active, what happens is CBS is kind of like a bucket here. And there's a hole in that bucket when it's active. And anything you put up here into methylation goes through the hole. And you often don't know there's a hole in your bucket until you start putting water in it. So when you start driving up the methylation and you have an active CBS mutation, it's going to get sucked down your bucket and it's going to come to taurine. And taurine is going to be elevated. And we're going to see lower levels up here. And often cysteine is low. Cystothionine might also be low as it's just getting sucked down here. And glutathione is often very low. So it's a very cool test, it's a little bit more complex in the, this is actually part of um, my advanced testing in the Integrative Healing Academy. We don't even cover this one in the basic because you do need to have a clear understanding of the methylation cycle and of your neurotransmitter formation and breakdown cycle. If you don't understand that, then this test is going to look a lot like gibberish, but it's still really cool. And I know that um, some people watching this video have probably done a lot of research into it on their own, or they may want this test. If this is a test that you're interested in getting, you can definitely go to my website, www.sgintegrativehealing.com. Know that I will not just order a lab for you. Uh, if you're looking for a practitioner to do that, it's not me. I do require people, if I'm going to work with you, if I'm going to put my energy into you and helping you get better, then you do need to be committed to my entire program. And often we won't look at this test. If you just really want to see it after we do your foundation and you're like, Sandy, I want to look at a methylation 
subscription cycle, then I'm, I'm definitely game to order it. Uh, if you're a client in, in the program, and definitely if you're in the academy, then you can order any of the labs that you would like. Um, but this is not the lab that we would start with. We would get that foundation on board first. And if needed, or if you're interested, we definitely could run a methylation panel um, because it's really cool. And then we can geek out on it together. So if you're looking for a practitioner, www.sgintegrativehealing.com.